everybody. We just got back from the St. Louis show a couple days ago and oh my gosh, there's bull snake eggs in there. All right, so yes, these eggs are in a container. While we were gone at St. Louis, two of our bull snakes decided to lay eggs while we were eight hours away. Yeah. So um, they were they laid earlier than we thought they would. So that's why we were definitely were not expecting it. But these eggs laid by Shakira, who is our exanthic bull snake, and she has no heads or anything, but she's a beautiful girl. Laid some lovely eggs, and one of our staff members, Madison, graciously took them out because she laid them on the cool end of her yeah, enclosure. She laid them over here instead of over there. She didn't have a lay box because she laid early, but still, uh, Madison took out her eggs and put them into incubation for us so we came back and we have eggs to look at and we actually have not looked at these yet so we're gonna see what her eggs look like shakira was paired with three males this year actually she was paired with our c male we don't have an official name for him yet oh wait no that is mr steal your girl is c yeah, male. that was the name yeah. we gave him that's right okay never mind she was paired with two males uh she was paired with orange creamsicle our hypo patternless male we didn't see much breeding activity there though so we're pretty sure the dad is mr steal your girl or otherwise known as C male. That's what he came to us as, but I like the name Mr. Steal Your Girl. So we're going to show you the dad in a little bit, but first let's take a look at the eggs. There were some slugs that she also laid, so Madison put these aside so we could at least still count those with the rest of the clutch. So she had four slugs, and what do we have in here? We've got, oh. we got some mold growing Oh, out. we do have some mold growing in here. We also need to wet this down. Yeah, we need a little bit more moisture in here just because it's been a couple of days. This one I'm just going to throw away because that is, it's yellowy. It's bouncy. Oh, shoot. But wait, but there's an embryo in there. Yeah, well, oh. leave it in then. Okay, I guess we're going to keep it. Well, in that case, we'll treat it like we do other mold. First, I'm going to wipe down the uh, existing mold here as best as I can. It's going to be a weird egg if that hatches. Yeah, well, that's so weird. This I, I could swear it would be a slug, but then there were red veins in there. So I guess we'll keep incubating. Incubate till there's no debate, right? Okay, now we're going to take some um, jock itch powder, which is awkward sometimes to uh, check out with when you're buying this Maybe you just also get Lotrimin foot powder? I, foot powder? Yeah, yeah, you could also get Lotrimin foot powder. That would work. But yeah, got you wanted jock to go itch. for the jock itch powder yes. this time? Yep, uh, it, it seems to work pretty well. So we are going to just tap a little bit of this on the egg, and that will hopefully prevent more mold from growing on it. And I see a little bit of mold on a couple other eggs, too. We've got some over here. Interesting how much mold there is on these. Yeah. But hopefully we're able to catch it soon enough here. Oh, yeah. I'm we've got sure, some, yeah. yeah, we've got some fuzziness right here. I mean, you can tell the healthy eggs, like these three and these two don't have any molds. So yeah, they're resistant to they're it. completely healthy because of the oxygen exchange. Yeah, and that's that's the thing too. If a, an egg is bad anyway, it's going to be more susceptible to mold and going back, uh, you know, altogether. But if they're a good egg, they'll be resistant to it. So we're just going to try to help these not so healthy eggs along by wiping off the mold. Got some over here. We're going to put some powder on all of them. Remember when I used to put like a glue mixture on or things like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, we used to mix this with Elmer's glue and make a paste, but it seems like this is just easier and it works just as well in our experience. Not that using the Elmer's glue would be bad at all, but I don't think it's necessary. Nope. There we go. Okay, I think I've treated all the spots that I want to. Maybe I'll do a little bit on the spot right there. Okay, so hopefully that'll prevent the mold from continuing. If it doesn't, then that egg might be a goner. I'm gonna do this too. Oh, yeah. Those are garbage, <laughs> for sure. And now Madison did add a little red dot to the top uh, side of each egg, just in case something happened between when she collected them and when we came in, she'd be able to reorient them. But I think we have to add a full on design to make it really obvious what side is up. And that's just kind of what we do here at Snake Discovery. Oh yeah, let's add some water. For adding water, like throughout incubation, we typically pour into each of the four corners surrounding the eggs, and then it kind of disperses throughout the incubation tray. And another thing we're gonna do, Madison did a great job collecting these, but I think what we're gonna do is block off the holes here with some tape, because this might be a little too much ventilation for these eggs, and it might be what's causing them to dry out or causing the perlite to dry out so quickly. So we're gonna take some tape and cover up pretty much all but two of those holes. They are all covered except for two, which should be uh, should be good. Now we need a, des or a, a, a theme for all these eggs. And since we have nine eggs, what if we did nine planets? That'd work. Okay, let's let's do that. 
Can you name all the planets without looking at your phone? Uh, I feel like I could name them, but I don't know how to draw them. Ah. But we start with Venus, right? Mercury. Mercury, okay. If Blue's Clues taught me anything, it's that Mercury was first, and then Venus, then Earth. Yep, I have to figure out how to differentiate all these planets too. What's unique about Mercury? It's really hot. It's really hot, and it has a couple dots on it, it looks like. Not Perfect. that I'm cheating and looking online, of course. All right, then okay. we got Venus. Next is Venus. Venus has like a cool band in it. Yep. Okay, that'll be Venus. Then Earth is home to me and you. Are you gonna go through the song? Maybe. Yeah, you learned a weird song about planets and I did not. It's Blue's Clues. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's Blue's Clues, apparently. No, I didn't get that channel. That's gonna be easy, just draw the continents. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there's Earth. Okay, and then Mars is the red one. Okay, Mars. I think it's Jupiter's most wide? Yeah, I think Jupiter's, yep, Jupiter's next. Gotta include the big spot on Jupiter. There we go. Jupiter kind of has a cool line going across too, or a couple of them. All right, that's my Jupiter. Is it something like Saturn has those mighty rings? I don't remember. It's so long since I've actually heard know. this song and now I've lost it. So I'm gonna look it up. Oh, it's icy wings. Icy, or wings. icy rings. Sorry. Perfect. Then Uranus spins on its side. Oh, she left me. Okay, we've got Uranus there. We're trying our very hardest not to say... Uranus? <laughs> well, we were trying our hardest. <laughs> and then Neptune's really windy. Okay, we're gonna do Neptune over here. Oh, you're gonna make Pluto the dead one? I'm gonna... Pluto's gonna be the test one. You'll see. Because it's not really a planet? Well, we're gonna see. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Apparently it's got a butt... That's Uranus! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's Neptune. Perfect, and then Pluto's really small. And Pluto is gonna be a test. Is Pluto a planet? If this egg hatches, Pluto is, in fact, a planet. If this egg does not hatch, then Pluto is not. This is gonna be our test for the year. We're gonna win some, uh, some Nobel- Scientific award. Scientific award with this? <laughs> with this egg. It's going to determine if Pluto is, in fact, a planet. Those are, here is our planet clutch of bull snake eggs. It's kind of cool, you can see like uh, some veins starting on some of these, like Jupiter here. You can kind of see some red veins. That's yeah. pretty neat. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're gonna put them into incubation. Thankfully, they're already labeled yep. for the date that they were laid. And now let's move on to the second clutch for, in this video. The second clutch came from Priscilla, who also laid her eggs while we were out of town. Of course. She laid her clutch later in the day. So we actually had staff uh, take her eggs and put them in a lay box because we were gonna be home relatively soon. So with the timing of her, when she laid, the eggs should have been just fine by the time we got back. Unfortunately, there was a miscommunication with the staff and the, per the people who collected them, put them in a lay box, but on the cool end of the enclosure, not the warm end. So we think a lot of her eggs went bad because they went too long not being incubated or not being warm. If they were put on the warm end, they would have been just fine, we believe, when we got back. But unfortunately, they weren't. So we don't have super high hopes with this clutch anymore. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But Priscilla here was paired with uh, Mr. Mr. Steal, Steal Your Girl. Girl. Yep. And she was paired with Circus, our white-sided het albino, I believe, okay. and het hypo male. Yep. So she's albino, het hypo, and het white side. So really good potential for these eggs, but Let's take a look at them. All right, so these eggs, when we came back in town, we noticed they were put on the wrong side of the bin, so we just quickly collected them and put them in these containers, threw them in the incubator, and hoped for the best. We have not checked on them since, but I see a lot of yeah, interesting there's, colors. There's some blue there, and there's some blue over there. Yeah, so I think a lot of these eggs were lost, it's unfortunately. Yeah, yep. So, yeah. So, that one's bad, that one's bad, that one's bad. That, that one's, one's still Maybe, possible. might keep that one for now, yeah. but yeah, we're gonna get rid of this egg. Yeah. That one's definitely bad. There's a very strong odor coming out of this too. Yes. This one is bad. It's like a solid. So, yeah. yep, that's a bad egg. This one, also bad egg. Solid. It feels solid, not squishy. Not this one, one, I don't know. I feel like that one's gonna go bad, but... I mean, we can watch it. We can. I'm, that one's probably gonna go bad, but since it's not as bad as the others yet, we're just gonna cover it with some of that. It's wet too. Yeah, we can add some. So it looks like this one also probably went bad. Oh yeah, look at that. It's all caved in. I'm gonna let it sit, I guess, for now. And again, treat it with just this jock itch powder. We'll see what happens. I'm assuming it's gonna go bad. So don't expect those to last throughout incubation <laughs> during the hatching video, if any of these hatch. Those eggs are probably gonna be gone. Yeah, probably that one, honestly. Probably that one, so. too. So these three are our only good eggs from that half of the clutch. Then over here, 
These were the deflated ones, right? Yeah, this was a big, this was the big clump of the eggs and they were all squished into each other, deflated. So I put them on, on perlite and then covered them with sphagnum moss, kind of imitating the damp paper towel trick where you can lay a damp paper towel on like indented, dehydrated eggs and it, they might rehydrate. I instead just surrounded the whole clump with sphagnum moss so I, I mean, could there's, there's cover. There's a little bit of mold on that one and that uh, one, but these three uh, don't look half bad. Yeah, those three might bounce back four. There's one down there, okay. I think. I'm gonna get some of this moss out of the way for a second here. I mean, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven might. I'm guessing these three are goners, and that's a big maybe. I think, should we take these out? I mean, there's little, there's fungus gnat maggots on them. You can pull them. So I'm thinking we might wanna pull them. Okay. Gotta love fungus gnats. Oh, yeah. Everywhere sometimes. Okay, I was able to separate these two bad eggs. And looking at them, yeah, I don't see them making it, unfortunately. Yeah. Gosh, it's tempting, but with all of the larvae on them. You can uh, knock the larvae off. Yeah, should we try? Spray them with the anti-fungus powder. Yeah, we could try that. Okay, then they'll at least be separated, so if we have to take them out yep. later, we can. We'll have to figure it out with that one, too. But. Yeah, oh man. So I'm just gonna try to clean these two off as best as I can. All right, I cleaned those two off, and God, I really wanna be able to take that one out, because that one I know is bad. Yeah. Like, it turned blue. So I'm gonna try to remove that one and yank it out of here. Okay, I got it, and that is going directly into the trash. All right. That one does not feel good at all. This one also I think is bad, but don't know if I can... There. That yeah. one looks still good. Yeah, the one down there surprisingly looks good. There's another one down here that's buried. Yeah, that one, yeah. Which I, I'm gonna Is pitch that one. Yep, that one's yeah. solid. So I'm gonna pitch this one too. Gone. And they make a thunk when they go in the garbage, you know they're not. <laughs> yeah, really. So yeah, I would just load these two up with the jock itch powder. Okay. Fight off the fungus gnats and mold. Yeah. And we'll just check on them. I don't think they're gonna make it. But I it's don't. Worth a shot. Yeah, we'll give them one more chance at least. I mean, some of these might make it. Maybe, we'll see. Should I just cover them in sphagnum moss yep. again? That's what we do. All right. Hey, how, how's the perlite? That could use some more water. I think I'm gonna cover up the ventilation on the side here a bit too. Okay. All right, little eggies. Here's some sphagnum moss. Hopefully you make it. I don't think you will, but you might. We're gonna we're gonna try. And I mean, we're gonna pray been... for the best. Yes. We'll see what happens. Yep. Since that last clutch was so bad, we're not even gonna mark them. I don't wanna get my hopes up. I don't know if any of them are really gonna hatch. Maybe the three from this first container, but we'll see. It's really too bad what happened with them, but uh, I guess we'll see what happens in yep. a You'll couple live, months. You'll live, you learn. you learn, exactly. Every day we learn something new about reptiles, right? Uh, but this is the dad, the common denominator for both clutches. This is Mr. Steal Your Girl, AKA C male, but we're just gonna call him Mr. Steal Your Girl from now on. He was paired with both Shakira and Priscilla yep. and his babies with Shakira the exanthic since he is apparently het exanthic about 50% of those babies from that clutch the first clutch should be exanthic like their mom and the other half should be normal wild type colors and for the second clutch the ones that aren't so good if they hatch if any of them make it they'll all be albino just like he is since mom is also albino and we could have the potential of getting exanthic white or sorry not exanthic white sided we could get hypos hypo albinos snows hypo uh, ghosts we could get. Yep. Um, so yeah, so we'll see. That would see. have been a fun clutch. That would have been a really fun clutch. We'll see what happens. Yep. <laughs> so uh, thank you everybody for watching. Please send us all of the good luck vibes for the second clutch of eggs because we really were looking forward to that clutch. We really hope they hatch. And uh, thank you to all the Patreon backers for all of your amazing support. And I think now we're just gonna wait it out, see what happens, and we'll see when they hopefully start pipping. See you later. Go steal that girl, Mr. Steal Your Girl.